In this presentation, we're going to take a look at the requirements for setting up or configuring annotation for Open Roads Designer Connect Edition. The pre-configured annotation resources delivered with Open Roads Designer Connect Edition include a multitude of examples ready for customization. Automated annotation of horizontal and vertical geometry along with annotation labeling for customized labeling requirements. Our objectives in this presentation is the introduction to labeling in Open Roads Designer Connect Edition using the Place Label tool as well as automated labeling, creating a text favorite, setting up the Place Label tool, creating an annotation definition, exploring the annotation manager, linking an annotation group to a feature symbology, and lastly, linking an annotation group to a sheet C definition. Horizontal alignments can be annotated during the creation process or after they are completed. The annotation is automatically associated to the alignment, tracking changes in real time. And the annotation is drawing scale aware. So let's take a look at automated labeling of horizontal geometry. In our geometry tab, we can open up the feature definition toolbar here and select a feature definition for our alignment. So under alignment I selected this geom baseline. Set that to active and also turn on the automatic annotation. And then when we proceed then to place our geometry, as we draw that geometry and complete that construction, you will see that the annotation then takes place. We also have the ability to make live changes. If I change this radius to 750 feet, you'll see that that label changes, the stationing changes. I can come over here and make a change to our alignment. You'll see everything then updates appropriately. If I want to add in a station equation, I simply locate the element. I put in my back station, accept it. I put in my head station and accept that. And then you will see that we have our animation of our station equation as well. Now let's take a look at how we can do our manually labeling of any of our horizontal geometry. To show manual annotation, first I'm going to, under the Drawing Production tab, select uh, Model Annotation to Remove, and so I'm going to remove the annotation. And then I'm going to come back and select to Annotate Model. And so this is if you want to annotate after the fact. You can either do your current model or all models. And you select it, and you don't have to pick an annotation group here because it looks at the assignment made to the feature definition. And so you'll see there that we have the annotation. Now, the second part to this is to place a label. So let's say, for example, that I want to place a station and offset of a certain point. I can go in and select that cell. I'm going to pick to label the plan station and offset. And notice how it automatically picks my dimension style for me. I have associations turned on. And I'm going to select that alignment. And then I just pick the point that I want to locate. So let's say, for example, I want to locate uh, the bottom of that tick mark there. So you can see it will go ahead, when I accept this, compute that particular station value and offset to that location. Now, if I come in, for example, and change my starting stationing or change that alignment information, that will also update. And so if I come in to modify our start station value, we'll select that, we'll pick our alignment and our start distance of zero, and we'll put in a start distance or start station here of 10 plus zero zero, accept that. And as soon as you do that, we see that everything is restationed and our label is then updated. Now that we've taken a look at horizontal geometry annotation, both manual and automatic. Let's take a look at the same for vertical. So we're going to look now at automated labeling for vertical geometry. To take a look at automated profile labeling, I've opened up the place name boundary, selected the profile, the full profile view here, and I'm going to select by station limits and I'm going to select my profile. So there's our profile. We'll start at the beginning. Go ahead and run that down to the end and then we will go ahead and create our drawings. So we'll accept that. With our Create Drawing dialog, then we can go ahead and select OK. And you'll notice that it has this annotation group 
pre-applied and that is where we're going to get our, our automated annotation. So select OK and you will see here then in our profile sheet that we have our vertical curve labeling done, our length of our curve, our tangent values, and our PI. And so that is the automated way that we can label our profiles. To conclude the annotation of the vertical or the profile, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can add manual labeling to our vertical geometry or our profile. Now if we want to go back and manual label, we go back to our drawing model. So if I just pick a drawing model here, and let's say that we want to go in and add a label, we can come back to our place label command, and in our place label command we can select our cell that we want to label with. So if I go down to profile, let's say that I want to label a, a partial or a station and elevation of a location. So I can select that, I can pick my profile, and then I just pick the point that I want to label. Let's say that that's my point I want to label. And you can see how that bends back and forth. We'll accept that and then you'll see the value there accordingly for that particular annotation. And lastly we want to take a look at automated labeling of cross sections and also manual labeling of cross sections. So let's take a look and see how those labels are generated. To look at the automated annotation of proposed cross sections in our placed name boundary civil cross section mode we'll select our seed file and pick our alignment with our 3D model already opened and so we'll select that, we'll pick a place for our cross sections to be placed and then we'll go ahead and select OK to create but just to note here the annotation group, this excess grid with annotation is already included and that's how the automated annotation takes place and so we'll select OK and we'll begin to process to create those drawing models and those sheet models and also include our annotation and so here you can see our one of our sheet models has our annotations on our cross sections completed. Now we're going to take a look at how we do manually label those cross sections adding for example offsets and elevations etc. For the manual annotation of proposed cross sections in my drawing production tab I can go over to remove the automated annotation and then when I select to annotate model I can select to do all models or the current model and you will see then that I have the appropriate annotation. If I want to then go in and add my own manual label I can go in and select that particular cell. Let's say for example I wanted to do an offset and elevation of the outside of my ditch. I select that entry, I pick my point and then I can tell it how I want to do it. For example, if I want to do an inline label, I can do inline. You'll see the idea there as to how I can do that. And then once you place that, then it gives you the offset and the elevation. And there's many options you can do with your dimension styles and how those rotate. This is just an example of the process. To create annotations, the first thing we have to learn how to do is to create text favorites. Text favorites are based on MicroStation platform technology. The Open Roads designer adds civil based properties to those text favorites. Currently they're accessed through the text editor and they have parent-child relationships with MicroStation text styles. The insert field option provides access to what we call computable text. For example, a computation of a station or an offset of a point along an alignment. The Open Roads categories provide options for civil based computations. The steps involved is to first select a text style in your text editor, type any non computed or static text, add the field computed text, save the label to a text favorite and then rename the text favorite to an appropriate name. So let's take a look at an example of creating a text favorite. In this example let's make a text favorite to label a station and offset. And so I'm going to put in after selecting my text style a prefix of STA space and then I'm going to put in my computed text which is going to be in my open roads plan annotation fields and so it depends on whether you're looking for plane annotation, profile, cross-section, 
or linear 3D annotation, typically for survey. So we're going to be in plan. And in here, we're going to actually take a look at all the options. You'll see that we have labels that we can compute for linear, for points, for lines, for arcs, spirals, and also down underneath geometry. You'll see the different options there. We're going to be focusing on, in this particular example, a point station. So if we select point station, we can choose the format that we would like to uh, see. If we want to do a partial station, we can do a partial station. If we want to do metric or imperial, we have all of these options available to us. So I'm going to select this format. We also can control the number of decimal places or we can use the active settings of the file. And then in dealing with station equations, uh, if inroads users were typically used by name, geopack users were typically used by index. And then we have the equation value if you're setting up a station equation. You can select uh, to use active settings or the ahead or back option. And so this is going to be our station value. And then we want to put in a prefix for our offset. And so OFF, a space. And then we will put in our inserted field for that. And so we'll go back to our plan annotation. And we'll go then to our point offset value. And we'll take a look at our preview. One of the things I want to change there is the accuracy to two decimal places. And if you want to put in your own individual suffix, for example, on your label format, you can just say to use the master units and then you can put in a suffix here if you want to or you can put the suffix over here it doesn't matter once you have everything the way you want it you select everything by dragging your mouse over and then you right click and you say I want to save text favorite and accept once that is saved you'll drop down your favorites dialog and look for the uh, value that it puts in and highlights STA and for this example we can just rename this and say uh, station and offset and hit OK and you'll see that that is then stored and so then if we want to place that favorite in our text dialog here you can see it's there and if we will go to place that then in our drawing it'll place based on computations of that particular alignment that we would select in addition to the text editor, we also have something called a text favorites manager, which is right now being released as a tech preview, so that means it's still under development. Uh, it is a uh, text favorites manager. It's currently accessed through the text editor. Uh, it's currently restricted to civil fields and support for the element properties category is slated for 2019 and provides a means to copy and paste uh, between different DGN libraries. Now I want to switch gears and start talking about setting up the place label tool. It uh, requires a pre-configured cell or a text favorite. The place label tool in Open Roads Designer has been enhanced to interact with civil based elements. When you use the same name for the cell in a dimension style, that will then auto select the appropriate dimension style with an arrowhead so the user doesn't have to pick one. That's optional. You can just have one dimension style and use it for everything. That's up to you. And lastly, the cell libraries are included as an example in our delivered workspace where some of these are set up. So let's take a look at setting up a cell to use for the place label tool. In our delivered workspace, we have cross-section labeling, cell library, plan view labeling, cell library, and the profile view labeling cell library. I'm going to take a look at the plan view labeling cell library, open that up. And you'll see here that I have several of the cell libraries that we've included in our workspace shown for plan view. We have station and offsets, a couple of different types of coordinates. Uh, we have the bearing distance for civil and then alignment name along, uh, partial station, uh, bearing and distance for a microstation element, and then just a, a plan alignment name. And so if we take a look at how these cells are configured, I'm going to take this station and offset example we looked at earlier where we made a text favorite but this time I'm going to create it again to be able to use for our labeling so instead of starting from scratch I'm just going to take this example and I'm going to copy it 
And we'll just give it a, a name here, copy one for our demonstration purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this text and start from scratch. And the process is going to be pretty much the same in terms of we're going to go to our drawing tab, we're going to go to our place text, and then we're going to type in our text. And so the rules that we learned on creating the text favorite are pretty much the same here. Uh, we'll make sure to pick the proper text style, we'll put in our prefix, and then I'm going to put in our calculated field here. This is going to be our plan annotation and this time we're going to pick our point station and then we can go ahead and for example set our precision if we want once that's okay we'll select it then we're going to press enter we'll put in our next prefix for our offset we'll go down to our plan annotation fields and then we will pick our plan our point offset select okay to that add in a suffix the difference here is we do not select this information and save a text favorite. We simply place the text in our cell where we want that to show up. Now, the zero, 00 point, you'll see that I have the dynamic axis torn, turned on. That is significant. We want to make sure that placing that where we're not going to have this huge leader out there. So. Uh, you are putting in intelligent text into this label, but you're not actually placing a text favorite within the cell. If you try to place a text favorite within the cell, then what will happen is the text will not be computed when it gets placed. The advantages of a cell is it allows you to control your border. In other words, your symbology, the way that it looks, uh, that type of thing. And so uh, I do tend to lean towards placing the cells versus using text favorites directly with my annotation. One of the things to, to also consider is you may not want a border around this. And so if you do decide to go ahead and maybe you just want the line itself and you don't want the actual border and you want to delete this information, you just need to be aware that when you go to place this label with your dimension line, what it's going to do, it's going to try to snap then to the center of this cell instead of at one point or the other when that dimension line flips. And so what you'll have to do is in your dimension line properties, you'll have to turn on the inline leader property to make that go out to the end of the line. The last thing we want to do is set everything to the default level where the color style and the weight are all set to by level and so I'm going to select everything here and then we will go to change attributes select default and then by level and accept that the reason that we want to do this is when the user then proceeds to place a label we want it to use the active microstation symbology and this way you won't have to create a bunch of labels with the same content but on different levels If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.